video is fair use. It is transformative and is protected under Section 107 of the Copyright Act 1976. Allowance is needed for fair use for purposes such as criticism, comment, reporting, teaching, and more. Hey, welcome to another video. It's me, TPE. Thanks for being here. I appreciate it. <sighs> I'm going to be honest here. I was just about done and needing a mental health break. That last interview that I saw with Seth Rogers really just did me in. I don't want to talk too much about it. Um, it, I just, that was Sebastian's story to tell. And I know other people are going to have opinions like, well, it's his parents. And I just, I, I don't think that that is, what, what if Sebastian's out there and he's hearing all this? What if that makes him not want to come home at all now? We just don't know. It's just such a personal thing. I feel really sad for him. I feel sad because of what this community is doing to not only the family, but to Sebastian. It needs to stop. <sighs> Today, we're going to be looking at part of Granny's Watchings video, which will then lead us into something else entirely and a new tragedy pimp for this channel. Well, kind of two of them actually. So let's get started. And that's my cat. She says hi. That's her saying, please smash that like button. Thanks for being here and we will get started. So this is Granny's watching and her video from today that we're gonna be reviewing is the one you're looking at right now. And today is Thursday, by the way. I will put the link to this video in the description for you. So the conversation was somewhere along the lines of clickbait and this community in general, I guess. And guess who popped up? Mr. T-Rev. The first time I had heard um, that name T-Rev was during the Kylie Rodney case. And I do believe he grew his channel quite a lot during Kylie's case, much like a few other creators and grifters. So I've never covered him on this channel, but I have heard a little bit about him. He's one of those exploiters that makes the same, you know, the same, uses the same missing child every day over and over. He even does spirit boxes. And I mean, while these children are missing, not presumed passed away, but still missing. Imagine how it would feel to be a parent of a missing child and hearing that, not very appropriate, in my opinion. And a little later, I would like to start a conversation. I want to hear what you guys think about, and I'm just using this word because Voices used it a while back. Um, what do you guys think about channels covering the missing children, but also covering the other people that are covering the missing children? Is it tragedy pimp by proxy? Is it right? Is it wrong? Does it depend who it is and what they say? And I'll give my opinion on that too, but we'll do that at the end. So anyway, let's get started with Granny and I'll keep you posted as we go along here. So they must have been talking about T-Rev in the chat and this comment here that Granny pins is what starts the conversation. And I'll read you the comment because it might be too small. It says, yeah, and his so-called doctor interview with a YouTuber and I got angry. I didn't watch it, but angry with the HIPAA laws. So is he a real doctor? Question mark. A doctor wouldn't do that. That's illegal. All right, so let's let Granny explain, and here we go. Uh, Jennifer, that was a clickbait title. So uh, T-Rev wrote that very particularly. Good on you for being slimy enough knowing how to do it. He wrote Sebastian Rogers, and then he puts doctor calls in. So he didn't put any, you know, uh, nothing. So right as Seb Sebastian Rogers' doctor calls in, but it's actually a, a YouTuber who inserted herself in another case who made sure to mention that they have a channel where they will be doing videos and then proceeded to discuss her experience as a doctor. It was not Sebastian's doctor. Wow, this dude is something else. Wording in a title really does matter. If you're missing a period or just one word, it can change everything. So I will show you the picture of his live or video, I guess it is. Um, here it is. And 
Look at that. Sebastian Rogers' doctor calls in live. So to be clear, no, it was not Sebastian's doctor that called in. But as the title suggests, it makes it seem like, yes, indeed, Sebastian's doctor called in because he didn't put a period or an and or something to, anyway, clickbait. That is disgusting, dude. You are nasty. And it's pretty clear to me that you made a clickbait title so that you'd get a bunch of views and make a bunch of money. Classic tragedy pimp on a disgusting level. This is gross. There are so many tragedy pimps out there. I wish I could cover every single one of them. I can't possibly. I'm only one person and I do this by myself. So, and the thumbnail, in my opinion, is even worse. Sebastian Rogers' doctor calls in live and gives an interesting take on the case. Are you kidding me? That is misinformation. That is reportable misinformation. I do hope subscribers remember that we as a community, YouTube wants us to report misinformation and anything else that violates terms of service. When you do click on that little report button, there's actually a slot just for misinformation. And that's probably the one I use the most. It's hard to remember sometimes, but we got to try and remember. I mean, for myself. I'm talking about myself here. <clears throat> Maybe he changed the title now because he was getting backlash for it. It was a video because uh, Sebastian Rogers, doctor calls in live. And then look at the thumbnail. Doctor Sebastian Rogers, doctor calls in live and gives an interesting take on the case. <laughs> Hold on one second. And a lot of the comments are saying, oh my gosh, that's Sebastian's doctor? Uh, well, that's a HIPAA violation. Because I think. Yeah, she says her name, Dr. Uh, Latina? Yes. Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> that's her. She's back. Great. Yep, she you has a history. She had involved herself before, Tracy? Oh, girl, bye. Mm hmm. <laughs> See, it's gonna make me so mad. You don't even... Oh, she sure has involved herself heavily. She was heavily involved in the Summer Wells case, where she had no problem speaking about the boys and Summer, and even putting possible ailments on them. And I will not go further into details on that, but if you remember, I believe Benny Keys had a panel about that. A very specific panel regarding a very specific ailment that they put on Summer, possibly, allegedly. She also heavily involved herself in the Kylie Rodney case, where she went on Zav Girl's panel and they proceeded to read the autopsy report. Does anyone remember that? I also don't want to get into details on that, but I do remember it being extremely disturbing and disgusting. And as a doctor, you make me sick. It makes me sick that you would insert yourself using your professionalism, in quotations, to speak about these missing children that you've never seen or met in person. It's gross. And then you made a channel. Lovely. Oh, let's take a little look-see at T-Rev's content. Sebastian? Sebastian? Possible sighting, Sebastian, Sebastian. Oh, there's the doctor calls in. What do we have, another sighting probably? Oh, yeah, we do, a sighting. Wow, this is sick. Sighting, possible sighting, guys. That was like five videos in a row he had that as his uh, title and thumbnail. This is very disturbing. This is classic tragedy pimp exploitation where you use clickbait, you use all kinds of misleading things to bring people in in your title, and you cover the same missing child over and over and over and get hundreds of thousands of views and all kinds of super chats and money. Wow, it's gross. Yeah, Dry Latina came from TIR uh. originally. She's back. She's clickbaiting over here. No. Uh huh. She's she's calling in as Sebastian's doctor calls in, but it's a doctor. 
All right. Oh my God. These titles. The fuck. Wait, yep. Sebastian Possible Sighting. He's a clever Sebastian one, Tracy. Possible Sighting. What is all of this? Possible yes, Sighting. Yes. She came from Sav Girl, and she's also part of uh, Lana. Trigger. She was with yes. MGL and all. Uh huh. The all the right names. But does the doctor herself have a channel, or is she just? <laughs> she used to. Let's try to figure out where she gets. No, she's bringing her channel back. She made sure oh, I mentioned oh. that in the first few minutes of the conversation. How? Oh, I have a small channel that I'm going to make videos on. No, she didn't. She didn't present herself as Sebastian's doctor. He oh. did with the clickbait titanium. How many days ago was this? Oh my god, I hate these fucking thumbnails. Girl, this was four hours ago that he made. It's under videos. Videos. Oh god. Videos. He clicked it from a call in of a live stream and made it into a secondary video. I'm so sorry. I've never been on this channel. I've never been on this channel. Oh, that's 100% her. Yep. <laughs> Draw Latina used to analyze Summer Wells' case. She got booted. She's a loony. <laughs> so I had heard about T Rev and his paranormal spirit boxes with missing children. I've heard about it, haven't really seen any of it. So I decided to take a look through his channel. I just put his name in, but there's a whole other channel with his spirit boxes. So he took it to a different channel. And of course he's covering Sebastian on spirit box. He's covered all kinds of missing children and people on spirit boxes. We don't actually even need to click in and listen to any of this dude's content to know that he's a tragedy pimp. Based on his titles and the amount of times I see Sebastian's name here, we can tell he is a tragedy pimp. I know there's a lot of spirit box people out there. I just can't comprehend how doing a spirit box on a missing child is helpful or beneficial or helps the family. You're hurting the family, which in turn hurts Sebastian and all of these others that you're covering on your channels. All of these names, all of these missing, exploited children who have passed on, you're hurting their families over and over again. Stop. I'd love for someone to tell me when was the last time that a spirit box helped find a missing child? Please do leave it in the comments. If it happened, I would like to know about it. Imagine you're a desperate parent. You have a missing child. You come to social media because you're going to try anything. And this is what you come across? Some YouTuber claiming to be talking to your missing child who is not presumed to be deceased, but here you are claiming to have a conversation with them, which usually means they're deceased, right? This is wrong. And you're making money on this. Not only are you doing it and it's wrong, but you're making bank. I mean, I saw all those views. That's disgusting. Somebody should go check that website that tells you how much those people make. And again, those aren't even accurate because, well, they're not accurate in the first place, apparently. But you don't know how many people are sending cash apps, PayPal's. These people also have merch. These people are making a killing off of people's deceased and missing relatives. Now, there is the other side of that. I've heard it come up a few times lately. The people who cover the people who cover the missing people. So I would like to give my opinion on that. And I would like to hear your guys' opinions on that. We can do it in the live chat. If this video gets to be long enough, I will run it on a live chat. We can also just do it in the comments section. Or maybe someone can spark up a live and we can talk about it. And I'm sure it's been brought up before, but I just want to hear from the people who watch my channel. Um, I'd like feedback. Am I covering these cases respectfully? Am I even covering cases or am I just covering bad behavior? I struggle with actually sharing the pictures of the missing children and their factual information mixed in with all the people's bad behavior. But at the same time, if I don't show their picture, I feel like 
I'm not helping by showing their picture and or being a hypocrite by not sharing the facts. If I'm correcting misinformation, I want to show the actual real information. Another thing I struggle with is, let's use Don Wells as an example um, rather than like a creator. So he comes online and acts a fool, okay, which we've all seen that happen. Do I clip that and correct whatever it is that needs to be corrected or does that bad behavior not need to be replayed over and over and over again for content? Sometimes I struggle with that. So sometimes I guess I just try and talk about it and what he might have did or said and then kind of like correct the creator after. I struggle with that. There's no way you would get me to play any of the misinformation spread about the Wells boys. Um, I really struggle with that. And that's what is making me think about what happened with Sebastian just yesterday. When his father came on and started speaking about very, very private things that, in my opinion, and it, again, it's not my child, it's just not what I would do. In my opinion, that's Sebastian's story to share if and when he wants to share it. I couldn't imagine a parent or anyone that knows me coming out and just telling everyone about my story. I would be embarrassed, I would be upset, angry, I would be hiding in a closet with a blanket over my head because you don't always want the whole world hearing your traumas. You want to share those with a therapist, your closest friends and family, not the whole world, not the whole world. So do we play those clips again? And not just that type of clip, but other clips of really bad behavior. Do we play those again to call out the bad behavior and then correct it? Or is that adding to the mess? I guess for me, I pick and choose when it comes to each thing, like I'll evaluate each thing and then decide. But most of it, I don't even want to replay it. If it's a creator doing something stupid and bad behavior that's nothing to do with a missing person or victim, then generally, yeah, I might replay it. Like if Betty's screaming out front of a missing child's house, I might play that because people do need to see the bad behavior. I think they do. I think if we're trying to open people's eyes and do the right thing, sometimes you need to show people the bad things and use them as teaching tools, if that makes sense. But where do you draw the line? I guess for myself personally, I take each and every situation and decide. And Betty screaming outside of a house? Yes, that has to do with a missing child. But what I mean is that I'm not replaying something that affects a missing child. The words of someone else. I don't, I hope that makes sense. I don't think it totally makes sense, but I'm trying to make sense here, I swear. The difference is the words spoken on a missing child, like say about the Wells boys, for example, when let's use Ziggy as an example, when she comes on here pretending she has a source and she talks all about this information from CPS and all this BS stuff about the Wells boys. that to me is completely different than showing Betty screaming outside of a house and me showing that type of bad behavior. And I don't want to call out any channels specifically, but there are some channels that will go live about, let's say the day's events or the events from the night before, and they will play clips about what happened, even if those clips are definite bad behavior, but they're also correcting the bad behavior and giving opinions on why it's wrong that these other YouTubers who are definitely tragedy pimps, in my opinion, why they might be doing things wrong. So they're playing it, but they're also correcting it. So where do we draw the line? What do you guys think is right? What do you think is wrong? Is it okay to, and I don't want to say re-exploit because I don't think some of these channels are actually re-exploiting. 
I think they're trying to educate. They're trying to show what is bad behavior, what is good behavior, and why it's wrong to say, go after families, blame people without facts. And I could easily name channel names right now, the ones that I think do right and the ones that I think do wrong, but I'm not gonna do that. I want to hear from you guys in the comments. Who do you think is re-exploiting and who do you think is actually here to correct the misinformation? Who do you think is here? Who do you think actually does the research to find the real facts and then, you know, they come on and tell you the real facts, even if they play, even if they play the bad things, quote unquote, the bad things, the things that we think are exploitative. If they're playing those, maybe there's a reason for that. Maybe they're playing them to show you context. And on the other side of it, this is what is the right thing. It can definitely be a fine line. And I do think there are channels that take advantage of that. Are those channels taking advantage, sitting up there day after day and just replaying other people's content and also speculating? Or are they correcting the misinformation and giving you facts? Are they educating you? Or is it just drama? Really think about that. And again, I am not calling any channels out here personally. I'm not naming anyone. So if someone does think it's them, it's not. I promise you that. I just want to open up the conversation and have it because I keep hearing that word in my head. Tragedy pimping by proxy. And that was from Voices for the Voiceless. She had said that, I don't know, it was a number of months ago. And then I didn't really hear much about it since then. Not to dig on her, I just have been thinking about it. Maybe she's right. Let's have a conversation. And for now, that's all I've got. I'm going to upload this video. And I do appreciate you guys listening to the end. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for supporting this channel. Thank you. Thank you for doing the right things. I do hope Sebastian is found. And I really hope all this drama settles down for him. And if you don't see me for a little while, I do need a little mental health break, so I might just take one unless something else pops off and I feel the need to make a video. You may see me again, but I, oh, I feel like I need a little break. Last night, the past few days, the past month, it's been a lot. I appreciate you guys very much and for all the missing and their families, my thoughts are with you. I am praying for you and yeah. I hope Sebastian is found, and I'm always, always thinking about Summer, and Michael Vaughn as well, and all the missing babies. All of the missing and unsolved. Keep them in your prayers, guys. That's why we're here. That's why I'm here. That's why I found this community. Justice for the missing babies. Love you guys. Take care. Great.